I'm Melissa Ray, joined by digital producer Mike Pronka, and we are here to talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs. Of course, Monday, 8 o'clock, the Hurricanes host the Predators for Game 1, and we found out today we'll have more fans in the building. Yeah, a couple thousand more fans than we were expecting, and you know, we had to wait about a month longer for the playoffs to start than we would have in a normal season, but I think it really did work out just fine because if this happened in April, we'd be down to, what, 9,000 or so Canes fans instead yeah, of six, hopefully. I think was what they were saying. Wow. So um, a lot less than what Nashville's expecting. So Bridgestone Arena can fit around 17,000 fans. They're hoping to have 12,000. What we were hearing were the Canes were only going to have six, but today when Governor Cooper lifted the gathering restrictions, of course, the first thing we wanted to know, how many people can we get into PNC? So Don Waddell does not know the answer of that yet, the president and GM of the Canes. We spoke with him today. He said that they're waiting on protocol from the NHL. So that's what the wait is up for. But 10 to 12,000 people is what they're expecting. Now, when can fans start getting tickets? Sunday at noon, fans can get tickets. Of course, first priority goes to those season ticket holders that have been kind of holding out and waiting all year because it has been weird to try to get tickets. It's been tough to go to games. It did, you know, they've been allowing more as the season goes on, but now there should be more for the general public. Sunday is at noon is when you want to start looking. Now, I'm really excited because even with what up to five or six thousand fans at PNC Arena, Canes fans get loud. Yeah. And now we're going to practically double that up to hopefully 12,000 is what I'm hoping for. Now. Yeah. Who knows, before maybe before the end of a Stanley Cup run, we could uh, see a full PNC arena maybe? Let's hope so. <laughs> and actually, the news today was surprising because we thought it was going to be June 1st. And I, in my head, I'm like, well, we got two games at home. You know, home ice advantage isn't home ice advantage when you have 6,000 fans compared to Nashville's 12,000. But now it'll, it seems to be like it'll be pretty even. And I know the KMAX pride themselves in being the loudest house in the NHL. And I think we're going to get closer to that with more fans in the building. And those Predators fans, they're no slouches. No. They get very, very loud at Bridgestone Arena over in Nashville. So I, when I was thinking about this series, I really did think that you could spot Nashville an extra win or so just from the advantage that they would have from having such a, a louder home base to play at. Yeah. But I really do think that what happened today in terms of uh, reopening the state kind of levels the playing field a little bit in terms of the series. Absolutely. And we know it'll be fun to have fans being able to tailgate. It'll feel like a normal season and just in the nick of time because really fans in Raleigh and our surrounding areas, the Caniacs are huge fans and they're ready to go for playoffs. And it was kind of a bummer to think, oh, we're not gonna have a full arena. It might not be 100% capacity, but it'll feel like night and day as compared to the regular season when you almost felt like you were at a practice for most of the games. Now I gotta say, I'm, I'm really excited for this series. Uh, the Canes did great to win their division, the mm -hmm. Central Division. They go ahead and they get uh, the fourth team in the division. But, you know, Nashville's been as hot as can be. And I really did think that going into this year, the way the division shook out and being able to play some teams that more often that you don't get to see but once or twice a year, yeah, drawing Nashville for, uh, you know, best of seven series, that's a pretty cool thing because yeah. in a normal year, you wouldn't get that unless both teams made it to the Stanley Cup final. Right. And when you look at the Central Division, the Canes really wanted that number one seed because you have Tampa Bay and Florida. It to juggernauts. So, yeah, these are great teams, and you wanted that number one seed because we didn't know if it was it for a while. We didn't know if it was Dallas or Nashville. Of course, Nashville had a late surge in the season. They dealt with COVID issues. They dealt with injuries. And now we're kind of seeing a different team. And the Canes have had their number. They beat them six times for losing the last two to end the regular season. Of course, that last game was a 5 nothing shutout in favor of the Predators. But we got to write that game off. Yeah, Let's I don't just know. not even talk about it. We All the Kane stars were out, so it doesn't count. And it's hard. Yeah, like you said, it's kind of hard to take away any lessons from that, especially when so many guys were sitting out because, mm -hmm. honestly, what did the Canes have to play for? You don't want to risk yeah. any of those guys like your Sebastian Ajos, your Tavo Taravainen, you know, yes. missed most of the season. You don't want him to get hurt again. Better play it safe. Right, and they're hoping to have a full squad and everyone healthy come playoffs when they start on Monday. So I think they've had a week off. Their last regular season game was Monday. Now they'll have until Monday, so it's a full week, and I think it's great for these guys to regroup, get healthy, maybe work out some kinks. And actually, what I'm hearing is that their practices have been more like a training camp because the season, 56 games come at you fast. Game, Very fast. maybe a day off. Game, game. I mean, so there's really no time to practice. None. But with a full week, you can get back to the basics. You can practice. Kind of feels like a mini training camp almost. Get regrouped, refreshed, and then go into the playoffs 
full speed ahead at home. Which is a scary thing to think about that the Canes accomplished everything they did, especially on special teams, without ever really practicing this much this season. Yeah. We talked a bit off camera earlier. The one thing I'm looking at in this matchup between the Predators and the Hurricanes is the chasm between the two of them in terms of special teams. Absolutely. In Carolina, you've got one of the best power plays in the league yeah. to go with one of the best penalty kills in the league. Exactly. So I looked this up. They're number two on the power play. Number you can always three. Always count on to get the numbers. I gotcha. Number three on the PK and Nashville's yards behind. Yeah, Nashville so, on both the penalty kill and the power play ranks the worst out of the teams to make the playoffs. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that's going to be a huge difference. We also mentioned the the offensive production of the yeah. Carolina Hurricanes. I mean, I just don't think you can go out there. If, you, if you're going goal for goal, they're going to outscore you. So there's a lot of other factors in here that are going to play a role in this series because the Canes just have so many guys that can score, not only on offense, but also your blue line. You have contributions from Dougie Hamilton, who has the fourth biggest number of goals on the team, you have those contributions. It's, it's just a pretty well-rounded team, and they're deep, and that's something that they haven't necessarily had a lot as of late. But this team seems to be firing all cil- on all cylinders, and if I'm Nashville, I'd be a little intimidated coming in. I would agree with that. In Nashville, they've got the blue line depth. I think they're solid in that department. They've mm-hmm. clearly got the goaltending. Pecorino yes. has seen and done it all. Yeah. UC Soros has you know, had a great season. He's one of the big reasons why they had that mm-hmm. six-week stretch or so that got them into the playoffs. What they don't have is guys like this. Yeah. They don't have a Sebastian Ajo. They don't have a right. you know Andre Svechnikov. Their biggest star power player is probably like a Philip Forsberg or a couple younger guys yeah. who really had a good breakout year. But which just remarkable to say that we're talking about the Carolina Hurricanes having the advantage in the star power goal scoring department. The way they've yeah. built this team is remarkable. Yeah, and what I like about these guys is if they have a line that's not on one night, the next line will step up and they will produce. And that's something that's been so exciting to see. When Svechnikov had a little slump, the other guys are contributing. They're finding ways to score. It's just really impressive. And also the way that they come back from being down. These guys do not care if they're down to nothing. You they'll they'll score two back to back and the PKs or the, the power play helps. Special play helps getting them, you know, if they have a main advantage, just give them a goal and let's move on. And that's right. how kind of how they dig out of their holes, which has been fun to watch because some games aren't fun when you go down to nothing and you're like, well, it's over. Not with the Canes. No. And I think that'll be a big thing during the series. I would agree with that. I, you know, like you said, when you have a guy like Andre Svechnikov, who I think this is what his second or third year now, mm-hmm. third year, uh, you know, he kind of slumps a bit and you have someone like Vincent Trocek come up and. He was even leading the team in scoring yeah. for a long time. I think yeah. Ajo ended up finishing in the team leading. So, points. yeah, and speaking of Trocek, last year with the Panthers, he was injured, wasn't playing his best. The year before that, he was outstanding. Right. So now we're seeing that guy back and peaking with the Canes. He's one of their top scorers. He's playing out of his mind. He's been such a good addition to this team. So they're really coming in red hot into the postseason. And we talked about the Predators goalies. Let's talk about the Canes. Three. Three? Three goalies, Peter Mrazek, James Reimer, and Alex Nedeljkovic, all three can come out and do their job and do it well. And the fact that you can do that in the playoffs and give a guy some rest, huge. Not even rest. I, you know, I'm honestly not sure how much a coach like Rob Brandemore is going to want to alternate goalies if he can get one in a rhythm. Usually that's the way you want to go. But if something happens, it's been a long season. They played a lot of games in quick succession. You got two guys that can step right in and have stepped right in all year and be you'd be just fine. And I've read some stuff from the Nashville media and what they say about the Hurricanes, and I always find it interesting because they're not, you know, well, none of us are in the locker room, but they're not on the daily Zoom calls and they're not listening to the players and Coach Brandon Moore on a daily basis. I like to know what they say about the team. And the consistency was they're playing for Rod Brandon Moore and their intensity kind of stems from him and also their grit. They're not going to be outworked on the ice in practice in a game these are blue collar guys no. they're going to go do their job they're going to do it the best they can and if they lose it's because they outright lost not because they didn't play hard and give it 100 percent. and you see it i mean obviously you see it on the ice in a guy like jordan stall but what i look at is one of my favorite players on the canes to watch has been marty nietzsche this year yeah he's a much younger i think he's a second season pro right now and he's a bit on the smaller end more of a finesse kind of player a scorer but he has absolutely no problems, you know, getting up in the dirty areas, playing on the boards, taking pucks, playing the possession game. Like, he very much has taken to the Rod Brindamore philosophy of how to play a hockey game. Yeah, and they actually asked him, they said, what's harder, coaching or playing? And he said, 
playing. You know, I got guys with me to help coach. Right. But it, what's fun is that this team is clicking at the right time. I think they've been doing well all season. And what I like about this season is they're not coming in to the playoffs as underdogs. We don't, we don't need to call them underdogs anymore. This, they're not going to sneak up on anybody. They're, Very true. Yeah, they have the advantage in this series. They're, Nashville's the underdog. Um, they know that. So I'm glad that Canes finally get some respect. It helps when you have that many points. You know, they were in the chance for the President's Trophy there for a while. And I think their focus was on the Stanley Cup. They made that clear the last game sure. of the season when you're sitting all your stars at this point, And Rod has made no bones about it. There's one goal for that season. They want to win the Stanley Cup. I'm going to be interested to see how they kind of take the change in mentality of being a favorite versus being an underdog. You know, a couple years ago when they made it all the way to the semifinal, they were more or less playing with house money. They didn't have a ton of expectations going into that opening series against the Washington Capitals, and they turned it around into an Eastern Conference final appearance. Yeah. Last year, didn't they didn't go as far as they might have hoped, but this year, it's, it's still a very young core of players, but I mentioned Jordan Stahl. There's a guy right there who's been there and done that. You got, you know, Peter Mrazek's been all around the league. He's very traveled. You know, there are a lot of guys on this team who know what it takes to make deep playoff runs, and even Ajo, even Svechnikov, they've, they've been there. And the interesting thing taste. about this year is the fact that you do play your divisional teams so many times. They've already played eight times. Now they get them again. They're the most recent opponent in the regular season. So it's not like there's no question marks here. You just go out and play, and I don't think there's going to be any surprises. And, and then once after the first divisional round, you play the winner of the other Central Division games series. Yeah, so either Tampa or Florida. So you'll be playing another team that you're super familiar with. It's just a different year, and I, I think it's exciting, and I think it's kind of fun, and it's what did you take away from those eight games during the regular season that you can apply to the playoffs? And I, I also, we didn't talk about this yet, but the fact that it did get a little chippy. At the end of the regular season, you could tell that at this point they knew they were going to play each other. They were getting a little chippy, a little loud, and I'm wondering in the playoffs, I think that's going to be toned down, because <laughs> No one wants a penalty in the playoffs. Especially, I'm not so sure about that. I, there might be, but I think they're going to try to limit penalties, especially Nashville, because you do not want to go no. up against the Canes power play. So I think some of the – it'll be reeled in a little bit in the sense that they don't want to get a lot of penalties. Yeah, there might not be as much, you know, jawing at each other and yeah. fighting and all that jazz, but the physicality will be there in spades. For know. sure, yeah. The Hurricanes, you just don't want your guys in the box. The Hurricanes, for example, they don't trade for a guy like Cedric Paquette from – uh, Ottawa, I think they got in front, not, you know, throw them out on the ice to. Well, and Yanni Hockenpah, they're not really getting the 6'5, 218. I think this is. He's a big boy. I think this is weight. Yeah, you don't pick him up at the trade deadline to not have him put, put a body on somebody. Yeah. So it's going to be physical. It's going to be fun. We're looking forward to it. Of course, we will be with you guys the whole way. We'll be live outside PNC Arena on Monday, on Wednesday. She'll be live. I'll we'll, be here. I'll be live. But yeah, we'll, we have all the fun, there's some of the fun parts. But we will keep you up to date. And of course, in the loop of everything, and fingers crossed, by the end of this, we get full capacity at PNC. Yeah, no kidding. That would be so unreal after the last 14 so months. Now, Alyssa, you need to make a prediction. I was going to say, we can't wrap this <laughs> up without predictions. I'm saying Canes in five. I'm going to go Canes in six. Just, you know, by the end of this series, even if it's a sweep, they will have played six times in a row. It's mm -hmm. very tough to, you know, especially as much uh, you know, tape they're going to have on each other. It's going to be very tough for any of these first round uh, series to be sweeps, I think. All right, there you have it. I said five, you said six. We'll see how it goes. Ho hopefully Kate's come out on top regardless. We can be homers, I think that's fine. I don't know if it's even being a homer. I think it's just where the smart money is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's just me. I think the Canes are as, as good a favorite to go all the way as there is right now. Absolutely, I agree. Well, thank you so much for you guys for joining us. Um, we'll be doing this throughout the playoffs. For Mike Pronka, I'm Melissa Ray, and we'll see you all on Monday.